Hey guys, it is late in the evening for me. We're going to be using my Nasset again. And this is the old guy. 162 uses this shave. Here's the top side. And I'm always putting the side with the X on the bottom. Now I'm trying a different razor with it this time and I'll explain more in just a minute, but let's load this guy up. This is a, uh, it looks very much like a 40s super speed. And, uh, and that's a, there's a good reason for that, but an easy way to tell them apart is this band right here with the Ranger Tech. It is uh, shiny like this. It's not knurled with the normal 40 style. It is uh, knurled uh, like the rest of this handle up here. Now, um, I just looked at this one and compared it to my regular 40 style super speed. And now I can tell them apart by the angle of the uh, solid guard bar here. It's a much steeper angle right here. The other one comes out and then makes a turn where this is kind of steep and makes a turn. And so there's a slight difference there. And uh, we'll talk about that more in a second. So here's my Nasset with the X. So that is going down into the razor. I've shaved with this razor a couple times, got great shaves from it. The soap we're going to be using today is Sweetbriar uh, yeah, Pipe Tobacco Scent from Mystic Water Soap. And uh, I have been looking for a soap to bring in, a full tub to bring into my collection uh, from Mystic Water because their performance is amazing. Very slick, a very underrated soap that a lot of people just pass by. There are a lot of scents available. Maybe one of the reasons is because uh, they're tricky. If you come at the soap with too much water, it washes it out and it's really hard to get a good lather. Uh, but I learned early on how to do it right. And my method actually is to come at soaps with a, a less water in my brush and so that works for this soap and so I've never really had a problem with it. Uh, you can buy it in these cool white tubs like so many. These are the same uh, design as the sterling tubs with a slight indentation on the bottom and I, I like these a lot. They're very solid, easy stackable. Um, you can also buy it in refill pucks and it's pretty inexpensive. Um, was it nine dollars or eleven dollars for the refill puck that you can then put into one of these uh, and then if you buy the refill puck, I think they send you the label so that you could just slap it on there. Uh, so it's a nice uh, soap company. I've dealt with the, uh, the owner. I, I placed an order for some samples. Um, it's a little convoluted on their website how to order samples. Uh, basically, you, um, you, you put in an order for the samples, but in the comment, you actually write, type out the three flavors, the three scents that you would like to have. And that's that sample price. And then if you want more samples, then you put in uh, another line item for that same uh, sampler. And then you write three different fragrances. Um, well, I had done that, but I missed one. And so I, had bas I was basically paying for more samples than I was actually going to get. Well, she emails me and tells me of the issue and wants to know what else I want. And I mean, that's just excellent customer service. The... The only grief that I have with this soap is that of the several scents that I really enjoy, the um, the Accord, the, the scent profile just smells really good. Most of them have been of a low scent strength that I just wasn't able to enjoy while I was actually shaving. While I had my nose in the uh, puck or in the bowl, I was greeted with something I really enjoyed, but unfortunately during the shave, it just wasn't there. And so I have to pass on those kind, uh, and it's unfortunate. So again, I get a nice whiff. I get a nice potent pipe tobacco scent here, a little bit of vanilla in there. I don't know that I would have been able to pick that out 
had it not been for the uh, for reading the description on her site. Uh, and there was something I read, uh, uh, maybe her Facebook post a few years ago when she created this scent. Uh, she said that maybe there was a liqueur in there. But here's the way, and I, I don't really have too much in the notes, uh, if you read those, um, about this scent, like I usually paste the scent description. How she did it was she found a, uh, she has a perfume blender, a scent blender apparently, I'm getting that from context. Uh, and then she got this scent and it took her back to a tobacconist's write-up of a pipe tobacco and, uh, and it was a sweet briar. And so that's where she gets the name. But the, as she read the write-up, it talked about, um, it was a, a sweet tobacco that was well briary, quote, um, and then it had, it's sure to have a little vanilla and maybe a liqueur is what it said. And so in essence, her describing the scent is, is her quotation of something that reminded her of the scent, you know, so it's kind of indirect like that. Anyway, it's a great pipe tobacco scent. Um, it's softened up and sweetened up a little bit with the vanilla and maybe that liqueur that she was mentioning. And that's what I'm getting just from the dry. Okay, I'm about to try it for the first time and we'll see how it is when it gets wet. I told you about the razor. Yeah, let's show you the brush. This is my Carnivus and Richardson um, B5 Declaration brush. It's been soaking for several minutes. All right, put a little water on my face. Usual kind of 24 hour shave, uh, 24 hour hair growth on my beard today. Okay, so unmask the soap. Nice. And then I will shake out. This is my usual hard water and it's just tepid. Shake a lot of it out. And then we'll load for 30 seconds. A quarter teaspoon is what, if you're going to measure uh, about the size of an almond, something like that, is what you need. And that gives me about, in history, it has given me about five passes of lather. All right, let's go with, oh, 45 is rolling around right there. So let's go ahead and start. So uh, about this razor here. If you watch my channel very much, you will no doubt know that I use the uh, Sheraton for uh, my aging Nasset blade that I'll be using. And I use it a lot when it's, when it's this old. It, it's just something about the geometry. Well, I may have seen some of that geometry in action 30 seconds down. And this is what the 30 second load looks like for this particular brush. I believe it's a 24 millimeter. But, you know, the, the, the declaration brushes are uh, stuffed full of hairs. So it's a, it's a, um, a knot with a high density. You want to rinse this out. All right. Lather bowl, as usual. It's my Quintero 3D printable bowl. If you're a viewer of mine, I know that there's at least two guys out there who have uh, gotten this bowl printed for themselves. Um, using an online service, would you mind commenting uh, on one of my videos and just letting me know uh, which service you went through and maybe what price, if, if you don't mind. And that way it'll be nice to be able to tell people because uh, so many people like me don't have any experience with you know sending designs off to have them be printed, that sort of thing. Thank you. So here we are and we'll see we've already got this early lather that's you know, coming up really nicely and it looks good. And that's the secret to Mystic Water. It's, it's not really a, a difficult soap to lather. Just spend a little time before you start adding water to kind of build up the, the early lather a little bit. So this razor um, seems to have very similar geometry to my Sheraton. This um, 
Ranger Tech. As a matter of fact, the uh, I brought the Sheraton to let you compare. Look at the handles. Handles are pretty much identical, even to the the shiny part above the twist knob, the unknurled part above the twist knob. Now, obviously, the silver one, the Ranger Tech, has the exposed center rail because this is a newer, uh, this is older, this is newer. Um, and that was just the way one of the design changes they kind of did. But if you look at the, I don't know if I can make it so you can see it right, but if you can see the angles there with the Sheraton, it just, as it as the blade comes out from underneath the top cap on the Sheraton and on this one, it's kind of coming down at an angle and then the safety bar or the comb tucks away. With the 40s style, which looks ex almost exactly like this, but with the knurling right there, and the top cap looks very similar. It's just a slight different design and it seems like the blade comes out a little flatter. Now that is a, is still a wonderful shaver, very smooth. Uh, I really, really like the 40 style super speed uh, very much. It clamps down close to the edge. Um, and so it's a favorite of mine. But when I picked this guy up, I looked at the head and I thought, you know what, let's give this a shot with a NASA. And then as I look closer, I notice the similarities. And the, it's almost like this is a solid bar version of the Sheraton in terms of geometry. I could be off, but visually that's the way it looks. So I'm going to give it a shot tonight. All right, so let's get back to whipping up that lather. Now with the quarter teaspoon, my notes said that about two and a half teaspoons of water was what I needed to add to get the lather to where I needed it to be. I have not, because I've been dealing with samples from Mystic Water, um, I do have a couple of tins of it, but um, I probably scooped back then. I don't really have a good figure in terms of the uh, brush load time, you know, 30 seconds, do I need to load for 40, what's the best value? You know, I haven't really recorded that, so this will be because tonight will be something I can use for that data point to see if maybe 30 seconds is enough. I think it should be. And I'm kind of evaluating this brush as well. I've only got five or six uses in it. And uh, the handle is different from the classic rubber set 400 because the veins here are a little thicker. And that bothers me just a little because my... Uh, my fingers are big, and so this is a, basically a smaller U-shape for my fingers to fit in. And so it's a, a very different feel than the uh, original rubber set handle. I've actually managed to secure one, and so I'm going to be in the process of polishing that guy up. Maybe get out my Dremel and work on that. But I'll polish that up and try to mount a, a, a knot in it. Yeah, this lather, oh, this is definitely going to be enough lather. Now, we've already put two teaspoons in it, so we might be close to being done, but see, look at that guy. Plenty of lather. He drops off in a pretty solid chunk, holds his own weight, so that may mean that he is definitely not done with uh, being wet. So let's put another half in. You know what? He looks like he... I'm going to add a little bit more than that because he just doesn't look like he's quite uh, there yet. So the B5 knot has uh, some of the smoothest backbone, the lowest backbone of a lot of the decoration brushes. But with all the dense hair, that increases the backbone. And um, as long as I loft it a little higher than usual, um, a lot of times what Scott doesn't do and so it's almost like I have to do it myself by yanking the knot out of the handle but um, 
uh, if I loft it high, a little higher, that's when I have a chance of enjoying the brush. When it's kind of at his standard loft settings, um, my preferences are more uh, le uh, are more for the smoothness and the cloud-like softness of the brush instead of the backbone. And so, if you like more backbone, then Declaration brushes are uh, going to be right up your alley. Wow, the quantity just kind of exploded here. Bloop. Look at that. Look how it's supporting its weight, sticking out there. Look a little bit and see if it see if it stretches when it drops. Not pretty much very short peaks. Didn't really give me too much of a stretch. So let's do just a finger test here. Let's see if this is one that I need to keep adding water to. I think I've gotten a better ladder than that. I think maybe I need to add some more water. This could be a huge mistake, but let's just uh, do it anyway. I'm, it felt a little, it didn't quite feel as creamy as I'm used to getting, and so I'm hoping that's because we just haven't hydrated it quite enough for, for all the soap to really uh, work into a nice creamy feel. And so even though it feels thin, sometimes adding water will thicken it up. Uh, some soaps do that, some soaps don't. Oh, I just got a nice pipe tobacco scent. Whiff up to my nose. Yeah, it's, it, it is mild. One good thing, if you are a person who likes mild scents, then Mystic Water is going to be a, a very good company for you. Because it's, it's been difficult for me to find a kind of a medium scented soap from them. Well, I've got plenty of lather. Let's feel over here. I think that was probably the right decision. Yeah, I think so. I might add just a little more. So who knows, maybe the quarter teaspoon was uh, it's, it's interesting you know the quarter teaspoon uh, that may have required two and a half teaspoons of soap but who knows maybe the amount of loading that I did in 30 seconds with this dense brush maybe it picked up more soap than that be an interesting little comparison I think we're going to try that now. Let's take a look at it. Do kind of a stretch from the big wad in the bowl. Look at how long it stretches. Hey, how about that? It is holding its own weight, but if I tilt it, it starts to collapse a little bit. This one's still fairly, you know, it's got a little bit of elasticity. Look at that. Look at how he's just holding his weight up. Maybe that means he needs more water. Let's just put him on my face and see. All right. A little bit more uh, splash of water on my face. All right. So the Declaration brushes are going to have terrific tips most of the time. The five, six, and seven seem to be that way. Everybody is loving the soft tips. But then it's just going to have backbone and density. And so, uh, you know, at first I didn't really know what the density was going to do for me or against me. But what I've learned is that it is, um, it causes backbone. It amplifies the backbone that is in a brush. If this wasn't as dense, I'd probably like it more, to be honest. Maybe. But I've also noticed that I have I've taken a B5 knot um, and lofted it a little too high. And I get why Scott doesn't want to loft them that high. Uh, because it just kind of laid over and I didn't really get the, the tips weren't held into my skin. And so I didn't have those to enjoy because it splayed so much that the tips just weren't accessible and enjoyable so 
That's probably why he does what he does. And so, yeah, this particular brush is a little hard to keep in display. Yeah, I am getting a nice scent level on this. It is available to me. I'm enjoying it. Oh, man, I'm happy about that. I took a chance on this as a used soap. It was on a good price, and so glad to be able to snatch it up. And I was just hoping that it wouldn't be one that I enjoy the scent so much, but it's too light for me to keep. All right, well, this is a slick soap. I'm happy with this lather right now. Let's see how it shapes up with the razor. All right, now also, uh, mild razors, and this, if I recall correctly, is a pretty mild razor. Um, often don't work well with this old blade. But maybe the geometry, if it's borrowed from the same pattern as the uh, Sheraton over there, then it might be gold. So let's see. Maybe the open comb is what I need, though. So this is just all part of the experiment here. A little bit of tugging, but really not too bad. So we'll see if this gives me a close shave. I have a few razors that I can use this to give me a comfortable shave. But then recently they have been exposed to not give me a close shave. So he passes the comfort test. And it feels like uh, he's pretty easy going. I'm not afraid of uh, getting the wrong angle like I was with, boy, that Goodwill I used the other day. Whew. That was two shaves ago and that was rough because he was going to bite me if I wasn't careful. I had to watch my angle very carefully. But see, this is the roughest part of the shave, the first pass. Rest is easier. All right, rinse this off. All right. And now we will load up the brush again. That lather felt pretty good. I think I dialed it in nicely nice glossy appearance to it that's pretty I don't believe the sheen matters all that much in terms of lather effectiveness I've had very good lathers just be kind of a mat with not very much sheen at all Switch to the painting, just lay down a little layer to help the razor out. I believe that I have probably six or seven passes of lather right there. So with this brush, I may not need to do the full 30 second load, which is nice. Cross grain now.
much more comfortable shave you know and it's not relatively comfortable this is an actual comfortable shave a little bit of residual slickness but uh, as the face dries it is definitely not something you'd want to go back and, and shave with and unless you really lathered and you see me buffing and that's because I'm going back over that area within just a couple of seconds and which is fine all right rinse all right At this point, I don't need to be doing this circular scrubbing motion. I could immediately go to the painting motion, but I'm kind of evaluating the brush, how it feels, how it splays. I, I think I'm liking this. And the uh, scent strength is, is available. I'm really happy about that. Um, I'd say four to five. So that's above average for a lot of the Mystic Water soaps. So I am really glad because I like this scent. All right, so that's three passes, and yeah, I've got three more passes easily in the in the lather bowl there. Lather looks good on me. I'm not dissipating at all. Something I noticed with this Nasset blade one or two shaves ago was that even my cheeks now are starting to have a little bit of stubble left after a three pass shave. Now I've always, and it was just a little bit, probably not so much that you could actually see unless you looked really closely and so it's still delivering a quality shave one that's uh, functional one where you could go out in public or have a job where you needed to be fully shaven and, and you'd be you know prepared for your job i've always said that i think from what i've learned of this nasset and who knows, maybe all old blades, they smooth out. And then as they uh, lose their edge, very, very gradually, uh, what will happen is that that gradual reduction in sharpness will result in a very gradual uh, reduction in your closeness. And so it's not going to start tugging too much, uh, so much as it will just start not cutting quite as close or requiring a lot of extra work to cut as closely so i have to you know play about ear as to when i want to call it for this blade i hope it goes to 200. all right let's rinse and what started to inform me that i had a little bit of stubble left on my cheeks and this left one's actually really good the right one maybe i'm going to do another pass and probably on both just catch some strays uh, was the uh, just the rinse after the first pass I started I just felt this is a lot more hair than I usually feel I don't feel this I don't feel these whiskers usually and so uh, in case you don't know I am uh, using this blade not for the purposes of determining how long I might use it in normal rotations I think that number is probably around 60 or 70. But right now, I'm curious, how long can I make this blade work for me? Comfortably enough? And with giving an, a reasonably adequate shave without, you know, an undue amount of extra work. I don't really consider an extra pass an undue amount of extra work. Obviously, that's a judgment call for each person. But I tell you what, with this, I love this scent. 
with this in, I don't mind doing an extra pass. Yeah, it's just a good, sweet pipe smoke, just like the description says. And I believe I can interpret that vanilla, discern that. That liqueur, mm, I don't think my nose is good enough to pick that up. Uh, but I'm really happy with this scent. I am really happy to have a good representative that I enjoy of this company that just makes some really good soaps. All right, fourth pass. Again, I just basically do cross grain passes on my uh, cheeks for everything but the first pass. As you can see, I'm, I'm just lightly holding the razor kind of in the middle, in the middle of the weight, uh, the center of mass, um, and, and it's able to move, and that lets me lightly move over my skin instead of digging in, causing some razor burn. Something like that. Another thing you can do to help a, a cutting slicing motion is to tilt instead of, uh, and this is also very good to do in the neck area where you're kind of uh, coming across a concave uh, surface. If you just go like this, see the blade doesn't really touch in the middle, it just touches on the corners. If you tilt it though, you get more into that circle part, and so I will often uh, kind of shave at a slant in this area whether I'm coming from the top going this way or coming from the bottom all right now okay I'm going to try in my fourth pass I want to do this kind of a cross grain this is a gentle cross grain pattern right here and then I'm going to do a touch up of that area but with a cross grain going the other direction which is a it must have a slight against the grain aspect to it That'll be my touch up. And if that doesn't do it, you know, then that's, you know, I'll just call it. Oh, now that's what I'm talking about. That's a smooth feel. Nice creamy lather. Smells terrific. Man, good stuff. All right. A little touch up because I'm going to do change my direction a little bit. A little bit of skin pulling and li uh, lifting my chin up and pointing that way along with a little bit of tugging and hopefully we can nail this area here just keeping a light feel that way we're less likely to dig in and cause irritation and there we go All right, full rinse now. All right, the result is I do see some length on a few hairs, but that's not a big deal. To me, that's still within the realm of a quality shave. Uh, and I was getting really nice, smooth, almost, uh, I'm back to uh, nigh baby butt smooth on my uh, cheeks, which is where I've been for a very long time with the nascent. Uh, so uh, we're working, we're still working with this blade. And, uh, and I think anybody um, would bear under good scrutiny with this kind of shave unless you're talking at the highest level where, you know, people are going to notice. Um, now, again, I don't shave against the grain. And so I don't know if this old blade, how it does against the grain. I don't know if it if that's where it would cause guys to throw it away and so that's why I'm able to keep moving forward with it because I'm not going against the grain uh, or if guys would get even better results if they if they were able to go against the grain with this old blade so I don't really know which uh, which diverging path I would get if I went against the grain 
Um, maybe that's why I'm able to go so far. Who knows? But I have tons of lather left over. And I feel like it's properly hydrated. I could go thinner if I wanted to. We had some nice uh, a little bit of stretch there before it dropped. We can show off a little bit of the stretch now. Pretty elastic right there. I don't think I need to go any thinner. Uh, and I, it turns out I was right. Remember when I said it felt thin, but I think maybe this is the thinness that happens before you need uh, when you need to keep adding water and before it actually hits the creamy peak. Well, it turned out I was right. And so we've got a, you know, shoot, I could probably do three passes out of that. Pretty cool. So we will clean up. Oh, you know what? So this is a tobacco scent. Let's see how it works with us. Throw a sandalwood in with a tobacco. Lather and wood, sandalwood balm. Face is uh, still a little bit wet, so that'll help this to, to spread around pretty easy. I really like the fairly authentic smell of this. To be honest, I don't care if they're using actual uh, sandalwood oils, because those are kind of expensive. As long as it smells the same, I don't mind synthetics. That's just my personal preference. Oh yeah, just a nice authentic sandalwood. Not not really throwing too much else in with the scent. I enjoy that. One of my earliest wet shaving purchases. All right, need to use it more. Happy with the shave, no irritation. Micro tiny bit of redness right here that is very common for me. I don't feel it. It doesn't feel bad or anything like that. Uh, so, happy camper with the shave. And um, I don't mind throwing an extra pass in there, especially when we have such good smelling soaps out there. So it looks like if I am going to load for 30 seconds, I need to use about uh, three and a half teaspoons of water to build that kind of lather. Obviously, looks like I can uh, maybe bust it down to 20 seconds of loading and see how that works. Now that's with this brush. If I had a smaller bore brush that was smaller in size as well as density, I might still want to stick with the 30 seconds. That would be what I would try the next time I used it. Also, this uh, is a great time to talk about open combs versus uh, solid bars or closed combs. Closed comb, open comb. In both cases, these are comfortable shavers, even with this old blade. And so uh, an open comb does not always have to be uh, more aggressive. If everything is exact, all the geometry, all the gaps, everything, then usually the open comb is going to feel a give you a little bit more blade feel. It's going to be a little bit more aggressive. Doesn't mean it's aggressive, just a little bit more so, or you should say less smooth than a solid bar. So uh, both of these very comfortable razors. Looks like maybe I could switch back and forth with them with this older Nasset. Uh, but I love how it holds. These razors, look how close to the edge the top cap is clamping down. I mean, this is the blade right there. Just, I mean, there's not much of it to exposed out from under the top cap. There you go. That's easier to see it. See, there's just not that much there. And so it holds it really tightly. So that means a quieter razor because there's less metal to vibrate and produce sound but it means a consistent cut and who knows that may be why i'm able to go as far as i am because i'm consistently using my favorite razors I, i'm using these that really come close to the edge uh, quieter razors that have a, a really good clamp on the edge uh, and who knows maybe all that vibration in the scrapey type of razors that uh, that back up from the edge a little bit um, that are very popular i'm not saying there's anything wrong with them but maybe this type of razor is what helps me to keep going farther. I don't know. Just guessing here, folks. Uh, as far as post shave goes, uh, I like it a lot. It does a good job for me. Uh, but I have oily skin, so I don't really need a high-duty post shave balm. 
Uh, so just about anything works well for me, to be honest. Um, but I wanted to report that the uh, the scents to me transitioned nicely, and that's what it was. The sandalwood didn't really uh, leave too much room for the pipe tobacco to stick around. But I don't believe there was going to be too much sticking around anyway. Uh, I wasn't really smelling it I was, as I was moving around once I was done with my shave. And so it's, it's a pretty low-key, smooth uh, scent. And a lot of times those are, are very subtle um, once you kind of remove the lather. Um, and so the, uh, it was nice. I enjoyed the transition from the sand, to the sandalwood. Uh, but just to let you know, it's not probably not going to stick around too much uh, regarding the soap itself. Uh, and just in case you don't know, that is the way a lot of the soaps work. Um, they're not designed to, even though they're scented and some of them strongly so, they're not designed to make you to be your uh, cologne for a few hours. If it, if it lasts 30 minutes to an hour, longer than 30 minutes, I'd say that's above average in terms of scent. Uh, duration, scent, uh, strength, staying power, if you will. Um, that's more relegated to the aftershave, the post-shave uh, products like the balms or the splashes. Um, and then, of course, if you want the longest staying power, that usually falls to the EDTs, eau de toilettes, or the EDPs, eau de parfums. Those are more concentrated, and uh, those are designed to be what really uh, help you to smell that way for quite a while. But here's one note. If you're at work and you've been there for a few hours and you applied your uh, cologne uh, or whatever to make a scent for yourself and you're still smelling it after three or four hours, the earlier part of the day, you probably, uh, your scent strength is probably too strong. You're probably offending a good bit of people. Um, and then maybe they're just being polite and not telling you about it. A good strategy uh, in a business setting like that where you don't want to be uh, kind of over the top with your scent is to uh, either use a few less sprays uh, or a smoother scent um, and just reapply during the day and that way instead of maximum scent with it slowly trailing off and then still being available you know after lunch um, you can have uh, start a little bit lower more even keeled and then maybe it'll drop off quicker, but then f reapply, f reapply, and then you're offending people less. All right, well, I hope there was something here for you for this shave. Uh, maybe it's to know that uh, Mystic Water is out there, Mystic Water Soaps. I believe the URL of the website is like Mystic for Men, or something like that. But if you type Mystic Water Soap, uh, then uh, you, you'll get there. And so now at least you'll know the domain to look for and that it's not some kind of weird, you know, clone or trying to deceive you just because the domain is different than the company name. Uh, but they, uh, she does a lot of other scents, um, uh, other scented products. And so that's why it's the, the way there's a special domain for the, the man shaving stuff, because I think she does a lot of other, you know, I don't know, candles or, you know, whatever, um, and a lot of other scents, but uh, so maybe that's something that uh, was helpful for you. Um, uh, maybe you're looking and wanted to see a shave on the Gillette Ranger Tech. Uh, but in, in either case, we will keep on rolling with a Nasset. Happy to do that and uh, happy to get a good shave still. No irritation, anything like that. No tenderness during the shave. And that, uh, yeah, that little red patch is gone. Um, so I'm a good, good, happy camper. Uh, so this is Sugar Daddy Shaves, and you take care. Good night.